Hi paper lovers, welcome back to my channel. I am Barbara from Barbara Paper Lover and welcome back to the reference, reference sample book series. In the previous videos I made this album cover, the front cover, the closures and on the inside I made one and two pockets. I also made some inserts. This is one of them and today I'm going to start with the inside. Um, it's time to start to incorporate all the ideas for this reference sample book uh, but there is no plan <laughs> i was thinking about it last week uh, what am i going to do do i have to make a plan um, uh, i don't know there are a lot of ideas too many ideas even and that makes my um, creative mind block a little bit so I said to myself just start um, just do the thing you want to do and it will develop over time so that is what I'm going to do today I picked one of the ideas um, to start with and that is safety pins I have um, a lot of ideas over here that I want to make for in this reference sample book uh, but I also want to make sort of a inventory, uh, an inventory or library of all the different safety pins that I have. A reference um, that idea. So this week I already selected all the different kinds of safety pins that I have from rusted safety pins that I rusted myself, modern ones from big to small, different colors, vintage ones. Um, these are also vintage and even these smaller ones or the ones with the, the, the belly shaped ones, these ones. Um, so these are all the different kinds that I have in my stash. Um, and I want to make sort of a inventory list with them. I think that is the way to start. And when that is finished, I think in another video I will start... Um, making the different ideas and incorporate them in here so for today the inventory that's what i'm going to make this is the insert that i'm working on it starts with a craft paper page and i want to make sort of a introduction i think uh, to the safety pin i'm not sure how i'm going to do that so i will leave this page blank for now and I want to start on these two pages. This one has a flap and this is, I believe, perfect for a sort of inventory um, Yeah, on this flap. So you can flip it open and then some ideas over here and probably more over here. Um, so I was looking at the paper. This is really sturdy. Love that. But this paper, it is quite sturdy ledger paper, but not sturdy enough, I think. If I want to pin all these metal safety pins down, it will weigh the paper a little bit more down. So I thought about um, using some tape maybe over here to make it more sturdy. Some fabric tape or washi tape and using some other paper to glue it down and so this paper will be more sturdy um i went to the yeah pinterest i went to uh, google and i searched for images on um, antique safety pins or even vintage safety pins and i found these lovely lovely illustrations that i printed out these are, I believe, from an old catalog. Uh, these are priceless, I think. These are blouse pins. And I have nursery pins. And I have found two more. This one and this one. And I sized them down. And this one is on thicker and uh, paper that's also uh, with a more cream color and another one on copy paper so i want to use this to decorate but also make this paper a little bit sturdier um, what i also did is i took this one and 
and I uh, cut it out, folded it, so it is sort of a booklet. Really love this idea. Maybe to make pockets in, I don't know. I was just a little bit of experimenting last week um, of how to use this, maybe for in here. Um, it's an idea. I will lay it down. <laughs> Maybe not for now, maybe in the next video, or maybe not even in a video. Um, because first, the inventory. Um, you can pin down your safety pins in, um, yeah, in different ways. For example, just make small holes with a small punch and pin them through. You can even just use the pins um, of the pay safety pins and just... Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, push them through and uh, attach them but you can also use fabric there are meant for fabric so I want to use fabric I went to a fabric shop in my hometown this week and I bought two types of fabric it is both cotton this is a light blue and this is a unbleached cotton I really love the fraying of cotton and it is unbleached. Um, I love the color. It really suits vintage uh, paper. Um, I love that you can tear it. And this one is quite sturdy. So uh, even better to hold all these metal uh, embellishments. And I did some experimenting. I want to make sort of a strip where I can pin the safety pins on. And I came up with this one. And this is a three layered strip. The first one is the unbleached cotton. The second one is a smaller strip of the blue. And in the middle, uh, I use this um, paper. Uh, it is German measurement paper. Um, and I sewed it all together. I was just experimenting and I thought it would be really nice to make a sort of a yeah, inventory strip or something like that over here but then i thought i can yeah put on all uh, my safety pits but i think i need more room so i want to make another strip with you guys today and um yeah so i will be decorating these pages making them more sturdy um i will make another strip and make an inventory I think that is it for today. And in another video, I will do, um, I will start uh, with the ideas that I want to incorporate. But today, this is the thing. Before we go further, I want to show you um, uh, two things that I found to also decorate. I don't know what other stuff is going uh, to be pulled down, <laughs> pulled out out of my drawers when I'm uh, working on this journal, but for now. I want to use um, gummed labels. I have a lot of gummed labels. I really love these ones. These have lovely, lovely borders. Um, I soaked them loose this week because they were all um, because they, they, these are vintage and gummed and they were stuck together over time by moist or something. Um, so I laid them in a bath and I got them all apart. And that is not a problem for me. I can take them loose and glue them down. It's not a problem that they're not gummed. Uh, and I also have smaller ones. Really love these. So I want to use these ones to decorate, to stamp on and to decorate in this journal. But also want to use these and especially the bigger ones. Um, to maybe write some information down on uh, or even just uh, just stamping for decorating uh, why why i was googling for um, sample book reference book or um, catalog i came across a antique um, lace catalog and it was like a big book and all the different kinds of lace were glued down and on each strip of lace with a different border, there was sort of a 
um, yeah, blue label with information written down on it. And I really love that idea. So that is why I want to use these ones as well. And I have uh, gone through uh, my stamp sets uh, because I really want to find the word inventory or library, but I did not have that. <laughs> I really want a stamp um, that says, yeah, this is what I have in my stash. Um, so uh, I did not find the word inventory or library or something like that. But I did find uh, other words that maybe is in this direction. Let me show you. I found um, in this stamp set the word specimen. It is Crafts Consortium and it is, I don't know the name, oh, from the Eporium Collection. I like this word specimen, this one I found and I found um, uh, Grand's Magazines. It is French, don't know how you pronounce it in French but it is I believe like a big big store or um, yeah this is like a store <laughs> with all that I have in my stash and I also found this one and I really love the word catalog of course but also the word contents and this is also a stamp set that I found that says collection of specimens and I think that will suit too. So I think I will use these stamps and other stamps as well uh, to decorate. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to start. That's what I'm going to do. I think just do it. <laughs> just do it. Um, let me first uh, make another strip and then we will start decorating the pages. What did I do? I got a strip of the unbleached cotton um, if you want to know sizes just do what you like to do this is uh, about one and a half inch i thought the bigger ones would fit on here it's just eyeballing something that i yeah uh, uh, i didn't measure just thought it will look lovely for the bigger ones and i also made a smaller strip um, of the light blue one just a little bit smaller to go over here and then i thought this color is a lovely combination but i need to crunch it up a little bit more so i used a stamp set on this one let me get it where is it I used the Shedder, I believe. Yes, it's called um, Shattered by uh, Stampers Anonymous, Tim Holtz. It is this one. You get a bigger stamping block with it. And I just stamped with walnut stain just on here. Do not stamp your whole stamp because it's just a little strip just ink up the part that you like the best then it is a little bit of eyeballing and this is the effect it is subtle but still lovely and another go for the bottom part Just a small bit over here. So that's for this one. Like so. That makes it more interesting. And I used some Distress Ink Vintage Photo to color 
um, the cotton a little bit. You see it frays um, already, and I really love that. And I might even fray a little bit more. I really love it when it curls up on the sides. <laughs> okay, I think I will end up with a big ball of uh, loose cotton threads. Like so, just the edges. I think this one also just a little bit. Just add some color. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm having a cold. So if you hear me clear my throat once in a while, it's because um, it's finally winter here in the Netherlands. It finally snowed yesterday and today. But that means the cold is in the air over here right now. And of course... I got it. <laughs> so like this. And then the next step is taking a piece of this vintage paper in the middle. And now it gets interesting because this one is curled a bit. So I have to place the paper underneath to get in the middle yeah work with me thank you yes and then it's just one thing and that is to sew it down with a and uh, this is a straight stitch. Maybe you can use a zigzag, zigzag stitch as well. And I will do that now. I will get back to you. Okay, now I have two strips to work with. Where is my insert? It's over here. So front. And then maybe two of them next together. Next. That looks nice. I really love this blue um, because it comes back in this paper or even in a ledger. Love to work with blue. So strips are done. And for now it is time to decorate the paper a little bit more. Um, where is the... I really love the ones with the blouse pin. Oh, oh, sorry for that sound. Okay, let's see what I am working with. I thought maybe using it like this. Then you... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love that. But I think it needs one strip. If you use two strips, you can really see this paper on the background. So maybe I will use this one over here. Or maybe on the inside. Over here. Mm. Okay, just do and we will see where it ends. Um, let me take out this one. I 
thought about using um, some uh, washi tape, maybe even, uh, I think I will do that on the inside or on the outside, or maybe some fabric tape to make the um, uh, fold a little bit sturdier. Let me see what I have. Because I have to do that maybe before I will glue it down. I really love this. This is perfect for in this journal. Mm, this one I can alter myself. Also love this one. And I also love this one. <laughs> Just let, get them all out. Um, I think I will use that on the inside. For, for now, I will glue this down. enough so and this one will go around the corner love these antique illustrations Good, great. Let me see how that looks inside of this insert. All right. And then some tape on the inside. Um, which one? Which one? I think this one. I don't know if you can hear it, but my <laughs> the girl next door is uh, using uh, her radio right now. Very hard, so I don't know if you can hear it. But it is quite loud, I'm sorry. But I really want to finish this uh, today. Let's cut the ends off. So, crease it a little. Oh, it's very sturdy right now. So, perfect. All right, let's get back to business and attach these strips. Um, how to attach because I need room um, I need the fabric to be loose to have room to pin them down so I can't glue it down maybe staple it with a stapler but I think I want to use um, eyelets maybe one on top maybe one in the middle to keep it a little bit together and one in the end I think I will do that Where is my Where is my crocodile? I have such a big desk. <laughs> and I oh here. So much stuff that I'm working on this small space. It is quite interesting how that works. 
Um, okay, let me get some eyelets. Let's get out the golden ones. Three. And another three for the for the second strip of fabric. I think I need <clears throat> no, I think I don't need the big bite. Um Yeah, it does not matter which one. I think I'm just going to do. I really love this top, so I will not uh, cut it down. I will leave it a little bit overhanging over here. Love that. I need the bigger hole. And of course, some room. <laughs> Does it fit? I don't. I think I still need my my big one. It uh, it cannot get deep enough. I thought it was enough. Or should I do it on the side? No. Oh, let me think. Do I want it like this or more to the left? Then I can see this better. Also, I think I will do that. Yes. I've punched through the um, sewing. That's okay. But... Okay. I cannot go back. <laughs> this is it. Okay, second one. Maybe the bottom one. And then I will fray it down. Um, later, just lay it flat. I don't want it to be tight, so it will do like this. I want to have a room for the safety pins. So, bigger hole. Punch. working but I'm very concentrated right now because this is a one-time chance oh, I really love it but this is too loose you see so I will do one in the middle as well I already thought this was going to happen is this the middle probably just around here this is just eyeballing if you want to measure it out that's great but eyeballing in this case is enough for me oh, love it yes ta-da Let's fray the bottom of this fabric. Tear some of the paper so it will not be that straight. Great. All right. Really love this one. So, this will get bulky, probably. 
So I can decide to do it over here, but if I have bigger paper clips, I need more room, I think. Maybe do the second one over here. So I have room on both sides and I think that is great to do it like this over here just on the end of the paper does this need more or is this okay because I made this flap more sturdy but this is also a little bit weak maybe should I do it over here no 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 here mm, let me think is it okay yeah I think so what do I have for paper I still have this. To glue it down, maybe. Mm. Or use this. I also love that. But it is a little bit busy. Let me see. Oh, sorry. Ooh. No, I think uh, this is what I'm thinking. I don't know if this this piece is too weak for now, but I also think um, these are quite busy illustrations. I love them, but too much is also too much. So I will make. Um, this one over here and when I attach when I attach um, these paper clips I will see what the paper does if it um, turns out to be weak I can also um, glue something over here if I need to but for now I don't so let me see where's my crocodile I think I knew yeah I need my um I need a bit bright for now. Yeah, I need it for the one in the middle for sure. Oh. Okay, get some things aside because right now <laughs> I really cannot move. This is the right setting. I really would like to see these numbers. That is one. I will speed this up for you from now on because uh, <laughs> you don't have to see me struggling. I will see you in a bit when these three uh, eyelets are pinned down.
Okay, this is what I got this far. This is a flap for room for the inventory. This on the other side. And maybe you have noticed and I made a mistake over here. I have an extra hole and an extra eyelet but over here. I'm not really used to working with a bigger um, crocodile or big bite. How you may call it. So, but it's okay. I told you now, maybe you did not even uh, have noticed it, but okay. There are two spots for inventory. So um, let's do that. Let's um, see what uh, there is to, to do the inventory. I have um, rusted safety pins. These are just all the safety pins that I have laying here that I rusted in a, a lovely uh, yeah, sort of acid environment. There are YouTube videos um, all over the uh, YouTube for that. Just search for uh, rusted safety pins. And these are, the, these are the ones that I made. And um, I really, really love the grungy effect of these ones. So I want to use these on the front cover. And I want to do them from, um, I think, big to small. So it will be like um, this. And then I have a... Um, yeah, these belly band ones, I think. So... Just pierce them through the cotton. These are very um, thick pins of this this one. Oh, love it already. Because they are russet, they are not easy. Uh, getting through the fabric. I have one, two, three, four. So let's get them a little bit more close together. Like so. Then this one. And these are just the cheapest. Um, like these one, these are just the cheapest safety pins that you can find. You can see they are even more dull than them. These are real vintage ones. They are really sturdy, shiny. And these are just more flimsy. They were very cheap in a very <laughs> cheap store. And I believe they have, yeah, yeah, they are made with some other metals, metal mix. And it rusts better. So if you want to make rusted safety pins, get the cheapest one you can find. That's my tip. There are even more sort of dull than um, the lovely vintage ones. I have two more. Just a small one. Like so, and the last one. Mm -hmm. Close. Love this visual. It's on the, yeah, like so. Oh my, I really love this one. In the combination with this illustration. Love it. Okay, I have room uh, more for here. So I want to pin down my um, vintage ones. That is this one. This one, this is for, for a diaper. It's a very sturdy one. This is a vintage one and I have two, found two sets of um, golden vintage ones in a thrift shop. And 
I think that will be good for here. And over here I will do all the small ones. And here um, my inventory of all the cheap ones. But I have all different sizes. So I will pin it down. Uh, I will speed it up. And I will show you the end result. Okay, are you ready? I uh, really, really love it. I'll show you up close. Here are the rusted safety pins. And over here, all the vintage ones that I have. Then on the other page, um, on top, all the small ones. And I for the smallest ones, these are from Tim Holtz. I used the thread to loop them through. And here are the yeah, just silver cheap ones that I have from big to small. Love it. Love it. Okay. For now, what I think I need is some labels. I want to use these blue ones. Maybe some of this measuring tape. Let me think. Uh, stamps, of course. I want to... Where is that one with catalog? Contents. I think this will fit in one of the... Um, one of the bigger labels, I hope. It, does it fit? Yeah, just about. Let me see Let, if I want to use Distress Ink or maybe Archival. Love the brown, but maybe, maybe black is better. Do you think? I think the brown will blend more in the background, so I think I will use the black. Ooh, love it. Um, I think I will stamp um, some labels with all kinds of stamps that I showed you earlier and then uh, I will decorate and make it more e even more lovely Okay, um, I did some different things. I um, stem stamped the word contents a few times and I searched for different numbers. I love these handwritten ones. And I also written down some words, some smaller, bigger. Uh, I don't know if I like my handwriting, but I want to get a catalog um, also something. So just get over it. <laughs> Um, and I will just do some of this contents. I think I will just glue it down. 
and I will see uh, what fits. Just, just edge them a little bit. Oh, it's cold right now, so probably will not run that easy. Contents. It is contents. I have rusted pins over here. I have vintage pins over here. And maybe a number. I think I want to use different sizes. Decision time. Just for decoration. Number 18 and number 5. And maybe I can write down a smaller. Um, vintage pins and rusted pins let it dry for a bit because this pen gel pen does not dry as fast as my I, I, as my <laughs> archival okay really love this sound. Oh, I can use alcohol ink tape. Oh, that is what I want to do. Also, do I have some left? No, I think I have to make it. Okay, there will be another video. I think I will make some alcohol ink tape. Just, yeah, this is printed on by Tim Holtz, but it's quite easy to make if you have the right supplies and it will lift up your work okay love it yeah i want it not yeah yeah i want it not to be the same so i will just glue it down and this one should be like this <laughs> i will glue it down the wrong way. So number five over here, a little bit wrinkly. Just like it has been there for quite some time. These are the rusted pins. Okay, thank you. Then Over here, number 18. Also a little bit wobbly. Okay. Great. Over here. Another contents. Like so. Then we have um, did I use the 18 already? Yes. Then these two. Oh, 
like so and like so and then i have mini pins let's call them mini pins and yeah what are these <laughs> cheap pins no I, I will leave that for now oh i will use this one too i don't know the name of these pins but i can always add that later on This one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, that is it for the labels. And I probably should have thought of using a background stamp. But I did not think of that. Does it need? No, I think it's okay for now. I really love it. And I think I will... This is a wrap for now. Really love how this turned out. Love, love, love it. Mm, I don't know. Is something needed more over here? I think the alcohol ink tape. I will make that in another video. Okay, it's done for now. I will, um, I hope to see you in the next time. Uh, for the next video, I will go on uh, with the safety pin ideas. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye bye.